Usually, when ships go missing, they leave little to no trace, and their mystery remains unsolved for many years. However, with the case of the Marine Sulphur Queen, it's not a case of what went wrong, but what didn't go wrong, and that is the unsolved part, which is the first one of these cases we've ever covered on the show. She was originally built as the SO New Haven in 1944. In fact, the ship was built in only 70 days, the average time for a Liberty ship to get built. And for whatever strange reason I couldn't find, although she was used for with a wartime design, she was never handed over to the Navy and not used in World War II, instead being transferred directly to Esso in the middle of the war. She had a long and lengthy career with Esso, and was by all means a beautiful ship by oil tanker standards, although that might just be my bias for T2 tankers showing. Eventually, in 1960, she was sold to the Marine Sulphur Transportation Company and renamed the Marine Sulphur Queen. This photo here is the highest quality photo ever taken of the ship in her career with MSTC. However, this is where the problems begin, because sulfur is highly flammable. That is one of the reasons why the ship was so unsafe. And another thing is that in order to facilitate the holding of all of this sulfur, all of the ship's bulkheads would have to be removed, which are the doors that basically make sure that if water gets into one of them, it doesn't spread to the rest of the ship. This meant the ship was really unsafe to work on, and should never have even been allowed to sail, but for three years, she gained a good reputation transporting sulfur all over the world, and her crew liked her. Fires, however, would break out often throughout the ship, and in fact, the ship once had a fire break out in one of the holds, and they were able to dock, unload their cargo, load new cargo, and still head out, completely safe, before they put out the fire. The ship set out on what would be its final voyage on February 2nd, 1963, which, as I'm recording this video, was about a week ago, so I missed the 60th anniversary of this ship. Well, that's not the only anniversary I missed. <clears throat> Andrea Doria. Then, the crewmen the next day gave their position as this, I do not want to read it out, and then, that is all we know. The ship went missing without a trace. A search was mounted and pieces of the ship were found, but nothing that would indicate a struggle or a fire. Burn marks were found on none of the evidence, and it looked as if the ship had just gone under a normal sinking, or as normal as a sinking would, and there was nothing to indicate the ship split in half like what happened to her sister ship, the Pendleton. The Coast Guard found that the ship indeed was not set to sail, and no one knows how it was even approved to head out there. Before we get into the theories, I'd like to tell a funny story about this ship. Many decades before the ship was even built, a group of explorers were heading through a cave in Thailand, and according to their accounts, they saw a giant stone slab that was very unstable, so they decided to remove it to see what was underneath. When they got underneath, they saw some strange artifacts such as American coins. So they lowered a lamp into there, and on the wall showed a lettering that said, R-N-E-S-U-F. However, they dropped the lantern and it ignited a stack of crates down below the lantern. Then, before they left, they looked down and saw an anchor on the wall. The next day they arrived and the cave was completely collapsed. Still to this day, they say that they saw a large ship, and only one of them was ever alive to hear about the Marine Sulphur Queen's disappearance. This story is interesting, has some weird implications, and is also complete BS. So for now, let's get into what the Coast Guard examined were the possible causes. One is an explosion in the cargo holds. Now, this is actually quite likely considering as you saw by that diagram that I amazingly made right there on Canva, the holds and the molten sulfur was really close to the engine. So it could have come into contact with some sort of ignition source, and then exploded the ship. Theory 2 is that the ship broke apart in the middle of the ocean for basically no reason. Now, a lot of people might be thinking, well that makes literally no sense, how could that happen? Well, take a look at this photo. You see T2 tankers, just like the Pendleton that I mentioned earlier, broke apart in two actually quite a lot. You had like the Pendleton, the Fort Mercer, and a lot of them that broke apart as soon as they were launched. This is mainly because the area where the ships broke apart was a unique point of stress, and the point where the ship was at the most point of stress. As well as that, 
Due to the way the ships were built and the way they were welded, cold temperatures would often cause the ships to break in two, which is how storms broke apart the Pendleton and Fort Mercer. In fact, every single time the ships broke in half, it was a pretty clean cut as well. Theory 3 is that the ship capsized. Now this explains the lack of any damage on any of the stuff found after the ship sank. But T2 tankers were known to be very stable ships. Yes, they did break apart in storms, but stability wasn't a problem for them. Theory 4 is also a really good theory. You see, not a lot of people know about steam explosions, but from a quick glance on Google, I know that they basically happen when, say, hot steam interacts with cold water. And, although it was the Caribbean, it was February, so the waters would be quite cold. Some say that the rapid filling of the void space with water, for some reason, could have interacted with the holds. Therefore, a steam explosion could have occurred that sank the ship. This is a really good theory, because if you look on this diagram, these empty areas there where nothing happened were the void spaces. But what would have filled the void spaces with water? Even if a steam explosion did occur, and even if we found out that it was a steam explosion, what would have caused water to get into the void spaces is the question. Till this day, the mystery of the ship remains unsolved, and I can't really tell which one would be my favorite theory. There's two good theories, which are the splitting and also the steam explosions. I mean, I guess if you lived in New York, you'd know about steam explosions. With many good theories proposed, the ship possibly laying in a cave in Thailand, and no other evidence linking anything to the ship's disappearance, the mystery of the Marine Sulphur Queen will remain unsolved. <laughs>